Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1206, the skeleton and bat, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. This is an easy and straightforward little die set, six pieces in the set, and I have grabbed those pieces and the colors that I will need. I love cutting the bat from black mirror cards, so I'm going to do that, and then I've just chosen a white for the skeleton, and then there's a little oval that backs the eye holes of the bat, so I'm going to cut that out of white as well. And I already cut the little bow tie just out of several colors, so that I've already done. These dies will work in any of your major die cutting machines, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Okay, so on the little oval, there is a stencil feature for the eyes. So if the paper falls out of the die, I just put that right back in again. And then I'm just looking to use a black pen to color in the eye holes. And I can either color those in solid or something that looks kind of nice is just to trace around the outside of the stencil. And then it will leave just a little white catch light in the middle. So that's just personal preference, however you like it to look. So then just removing the paper from the die, you can see that for the bat, the eyes are holes. So all I need to do then is glue that oval behind those holes. And I like to use my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. So a little bit of glue around the eye holes on the back of the, the bat. And then I just place that over the oval. Now I can shift the bat up or down or left or right if I want to change which way the bat is looking, or I can just perfectly center it. So for today's, I'll just center it. So just pressing down and picking up that oval, and then that will fill in the eyes of the bat. If your bat is going somewhere formal, you may want to add the bow tie. So there's just a little bit of glue on the front of the bat, and then a bow tie into that glue. The face of the skeleton is also put on with a stencil feature, so just leave the paper in the die and then just use a black pen to fill in all of the openings. Once again, you have options on the eyes. I like to trace around the opening and then draw in a little circle that I leave white, and then that just acts like a little catch light. Or you could fill in the entire circle with black, and then if you wanted the catch light, you could add it with a white gel pen. So it's just whichever way you like. Once again, optional on the bow tie, but it does work on the skeleton as well, or you could try it on the head as a hair bow. With the last two dies, which are the Trick or Treat Pumpkin and the Black Cat, I actually like to emboss the dies before die cutting and stenciling. So for that, I'm switching out to an embossing sandwich in my machine. Now, it depends on the machine what the sandwich is, so you could just go onto YouTube and put in the machine that you have and say, how do I emboss a wafer-thin die? And there are sure to be instructions. And it is a two-step process. After doing the embossing, I will have to change out my machine to a cutting sandwich and go back through and cut them. For the trick-or-treat pumpkin, I'm just going to sponge some ink through the die using a blending tool. And I just find by embossing first, it's a little bit easier to stencil. If you have a gel pen that has a small nib, then you can get into the cat stencil and do the eyes. But if you don't have a gel pen that's small enough to get in there, another option is to use a makeup sponge and some white ink, and then just pounce through the die to add the eyes. Once again, you do have the option to add a bow tie to the cat. Clean up on dies that I've used as stencils with ink is just some water and a rag. So no harsh chemicals, just squirt the dies with water and then wipe off the ink. The skeleton can hold the trick-or-treat pumpkin in either hand. I just add a little bit of glue behind the hand and then add the handle to it. Okay, here's a little bonus idea for using the trick-or-treat pumpkins as a solid pumpkin. All I do for that is I just cut two of them and do my stenciling and embossing and then just trim off the handles. And then for a stem, I'm going to use a green bow tie. So I'm going to glue that behind one of the pumpkins, just at whatever angle that I would like. And then all I have to do to finish out the top of the pumpkin is use the other one turned the other way. So just glue those two pumpkins together to complete the roundness of the pumpkin. Quick and easy assembly, and now let's look at some cards. The skeleton is two inches tall, meaning that he fits on all of our pop-up dies, including our new label charm pop-up. They are also sized the same as our small animal sets, which means all of the tiny accessories die sets fit the skeleton and bat. So look at this card by Fran on our design team where she's used all those tiny accessories to dress up the skeletons for trick-or-treating. And then on the inside, she used our little labels pop-up with more costumes and the bat. 
and I was so smitten by Fran's card that I asked her if I could use it as inspiration for an upcoming class card. So mine is a more simplified version for class, but still those tiny accessories used on the skeleton. And then another class card is this one that features the skeleton and the bat on our Upsy Daisy pop-up. And I love to end assembly videos with some great inspiration by our design team. Sue Small Crider has shown that beyond Halloween, you can get use out of the skeleton, dressing it as a pirate and using it for a birthday card. So this uses our parcel pop-up and treasure chest dies, and then the skeleton rises up out of the treasure chest as the card opens. Here's a label charm pop-up by Karen Aiken. I love this iridescent sparkly paper and notice the little hair bow on the skeleton. And then in this next card by Sandy Diller, I like that she's used googly eyes on the bat. So that's another option. And then she's used the skeleton inside animated with our mini pops die set. Here's a great Halloween label charm pop-up using the skeleton and bat. This one is by Lois. Another cute card by Sandy. I like how she has the bat on this oval charm and then it's on both sides. So even if it spins around, it looks great. This card by Jen Webster is a wonderful scene that she created using the fireplace pop-up and you can see the skeleton, but she also used glow-in-the-dark embossing powder for some of the pieces. Several members of the design team have made some fun haunted house fireplaces. This one's by Sue Small Crider and notice that she put the candles in the little trick-or-treat pumpkins. Frances Byrne has used the new Bats pattern plate as the background of this card front and then created an entire scene inside using the skeleton and the bat and some of our previously released Halloween dies. Suzanne has made a pair of cards using the skeleton and bat and our cupcake pop-up plus some of the other Halloween dies in our collection. And I just love all the clever little things that she's done with this, you know, the jack-o'-lantern head on the skeleton and the bone sticking out of the cupcake liner. For these cards, Nikki has turned a pivot panels sideways and then decorated all of the different levels. A skeleton and a couple of cats on this Little Labels card by Lois Bach. And then also by Lois, a super cute Peeking Skeletons card. For these shaker cards, Nikki has added a string so that the skeleton slides up and down but doesn't flip over. And finally, a wonderful double wide woven basket by Lois Bach. The Skeleton and Bat die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can purchase these dies, as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.